welcome to the video. Today is Sunday, February, some shit. I don't know, I'll put it on the screen. But um, we're on our way to the dermatologist right now because I want to, it's just a consultation. I want to consult a few things with him. Um, I have this mark on my neck. I don't know if you guys seen it in past videos. You guys probably think it's a hickey or something. But um, it's not, it's something, I, I, honestly, I don't know what it is. It's been on my skin for so damn long and then there's days where it gets where it gets really really bad so um, I want to consult that um, also want to consult this acne problem I have on the back of my head and I also want to consult about getting a birthmark removal which is probably one of my it's not an insecurity it's like I just I, I honestly I've never liked it I've never liked it and um, I just decided that it's time for me to remove it I honestly don't want it there anymore and um, I'm gonna consult that with them too, see how much that's gonna cost me. Um, I'd love to get that removed before my competition just because it's on my back and it's, um, it's pretty big. It's not too big, but it's pretty big. I mean, I've seen a lot worse, but um, it's something that is definitely noticeable, so I wanna get that removed. I'm gonna consult that with them today, and, um, and then after that, we're gonna go hit a push workout with my boy at his gym and yeah hope you guys enjoy this video man um please leave this video a like and let's kill it all right guys so just left the dermatologist um i have to come back i think in like two weeks to talk to like a specialist because um it's a pretty big birthmark i'll show it to you guys later on in this video or i'll probably put a like little video over this right now where i'm talking so you guys can see it um i just want to get it removed for for the comp well before the competition just so just for like aesthetic reasons um i feel like it'll look a lot better um like my back pose without that there and also one of the biggest reasons because i've never felt comfortable with that on my skin so um just doing what i please and um a lot of people that i know of um are honestly like it's not a big deal you shouldn't even waste money on that but i don't like it and i'm gonna do what's best for me so um with that being said, we're gonna go to the gym now and I'm taking my pre-workout, gonna take a scoop of this Fury Extreme. I got a scoop of, where'd it go? A scoop of the pump um, from Core Nutritionals. This is a pump product. I got five grams of beta alanine. And then I took two and, a half scoop, two and a half scoops of this Agmatine. And what Agmatine is, it's, um, it's what they put in pre-workout to give you better pumps. So we have that in my shaker cup right here. And I'm about to chug that and head to the gym. This is some jams. My head hurts a little bit, but um, just got to get my mind right before getting in there. So we're about to kill it. Let's go. What is going on, guys? Welcome to the commentary portion of today's video. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about how to prevent muscle loss while you're dieting. And this is something I wanted to touch on just because I am now on a dieting phase and it's something that I've been dealing with the, these past few months. So it's something I feel that'll come in handy for a lot of people. So let's get straight into this. Uh, my first tip is going to be to be on the slightest caloric deficit. And for example, let's say your maintenance calories are 3,000 calories, right? You want to go anywhere from like two to 300 under 3,000 calories. So you'd be consuming anywhere from like 2,700 to 2,800 calories because you just want to be on the slightest caloric deficit. If you just jump into like a big, big deficit from your maintenance calories, you are going to, you know, lack performance in the gym. Um, you, it's a crash diet. You're going to end up um, crashing. You're not going to sustain that diet. So you want to be on the slightest caloric deficit and work from there. Um, as soon as you stop losing weight, that's when you want to drop your calories. Again, a little bit. You don't want to drop calories a shit ton because then you're going to end up crashing, like I said before. Something that goes hand in hand with keeping your caloric deficit as slight as possible is that you want to keep your carbohydrates as high as possible. So me, for example, I like to have my diet come anywhere from 50 to 55% comes from carbohydrates. So that's how high my carbs are when I'm dieting. And this is just due to the fact that I want to continue lifting heavy. And this is my next tip. I, you, need, you need to continue lifting heavy. You need to try and keep as much strength as possible while on a dieting phase so that you won't lose as much muscle. 
Something you guys need to remember is that when you're dieting, you are going to lose muscle. There's nothing you can do about this. Um, there's no way to prevent it. So if someone tells you that they have a diet for you, that you're not going to lose muscle at all, um, it's a complete lie. Don't listen to that. They're just trying to sell you their program. They're trying to sell you supplements. Don't do it. You're going to lose muscle, but there's ways that you can minimize that muscle loss. Something you guys need to remember is that when you are in a caloric deficit, you need to start training with lower volume. You can't train the same way that you were in, in terms of volume as you were when you were bulking just because it's really hard to recover from this type of training when you're on a caloric deficit. It's um, hard to recover from it once you've hit that wall. Um, it's hard to recover and gain that strength back. So you want to keep the volume at, a, at that sweet spot. You don't want to train too much and you don't want to train... Um, too little so try and find that sweet spot um, if you guys want me to do a video on that I will because I am currently on a deficit and I currently have adjusted my volume of training so I can do a video on that if you guys want me to and then my last tip that I have for you guys is to incorporate refeed days um, when you first start dieting me for example the first month or two when I when I first started my cut I had no refeed days at all I think it was for like two months I my carbs were, were at like 380 grams of carbs, so I was all right. I didn't need a refeed day, but as you get deeper into your cut, you are going to want to incorporate more refeed days. Um, right now, I am currently on one refeed day a week, but you know, the deeper you get into a cut, the more refeed days you are going to want to add within one week. So maybe deeper into my cut, I will add maybe another refeed day, and that'll make me... So that'll put me at two refeed days a week. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys found these tips helpful. Please leave this video a like and I will check in with you guys in the next one. Laters.